Hi. How's it going? So of course, you know, we're in the Blue Mountain Range of Northeast Oregon. Um, but I'm not here to talk about plants today. Um, I get this question a lot. What's in my backpack? What do I take with me when I'm out and about foraging and wildcrafting plants? You know, what am I carrying around in my back? And I thought, why not do a video about it? <laughs> and so I'm gonna dissect or dissect, however you're supposed to say that word, um, this backpack fully in front of you and tell you why I have what I have, what it's good for, things to think about, you know, all that kind of stuff. So let's start, let's start with the inside pocket because the main backpack. <laughs> I guess that's a pocket, right? Is that a pocket? I think it is. Um, just, you know, to get things out of the way. So the first thing that I usually have on me is some sort of identification books. Um, these ones in particular um, are for Northwest weeds, um, sagebrushes in my area, and wildflowers in my area. Normally I have um, like a, a guide to like mountainous plants and stuff too, but I hadn't switched out which books I had. <laughs> but you know, find local books um, for your particular area. Sometimes you can find them just for your state. Sometimes you can find them for your section of the state. Sometimes you can find them right down to a county level. Um, check with your local agricultural department. Sometimes they have books. Now the books won't tell you necessarily if the plant's medicinal or or not but getting um, an identification on what plant you're looking at um, helps you search out if it's medicinal or not online and things like that um, okay so I've always got some sort of book I've definitely always got a shovel um, this one's covered in, in pitch because <laughs> sometimes I use it to get pitch off of trees or whatever um, but I'm digging roots um, sometimes I have a thing called a cupping on me but mainly I just have the shovel because it doesn't stick through the backpack and stab me <laughs> um, okay and then I normally have a fillet knife with me. That might seem weird. I'm not out here gutting fish. Well, I mean, it depends. Sometimes we fish while we're out here too. But these are fantastic for mushrooms. Um, you know, it's a little bit big if you're doing morels, but like if you've got yourself a big old clump of like oyster mushrooms or like hen of the woods, anything like that, I like that I can go behind the mushroom along the tree and cut it cleanly. That way it disturbs the tree less, it disturbs the mushroom less, you know, it's just, it's better than just ripping it off of there. Um, but I'll use it for all other different kinds of things too. Um, of course, I always have sunblock. Look at how pale I am. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't tan. I took after my dad. I burn and then I freckle and then I burn again. And I mean, I might look a little tan later on, but it's just because the freckles have been taking over my body. So I always have sunblock. Um, I'll even have this on me in the winter time because, you know, we get a lot of snow here and if it's sunny out and that snow bounces, the, the sun bounces off the snow, you can get sunburnt too. So at least for my face. Um, another thing I have, this might be weird, but you know how I was talking about getting pitch off of trees? I don't know about you, but if you've ever if you've ever gotten pitch on your hands, you know it's like really, really hard to get off of your hands. You might try to wash it, you might rub it in the dirt to take some of the stick away while you're out and about, and eventually you might try to use rubbing alcohol or something like that, but it never quite works. You wanna know what works? Olive oil. Olive oil um, is a particular type of acid in it, and it'll take just about anything sticky off your hands. I don't care if it's pine pitch or, you know, let's just be real, if you've been trimming a bunch of weed, olive oil is your main friend here. And I just keep it in a little, um, a little spray bottle so I can just squirt it on our hands. And then I always keep it in a bag because, you know, this pack gets thrown around a lot. <laughs> if it breaks or leaks, I don't want it to destroy any of my books or anything. Um, now, one thing I have that might seem kind of funny is this pair of um, dog um, nail clippers. Now, I haven't used this on a dog. Um, I have separate ones for those for my dogs. Now, these are fantastic. Let me show you right here. Um, I won't actually cut it because I don't want to. I don't want to harvest something that I don't need. But see, I can. I can fit this around some pretty thick little branches and you wouldn't want to be taking anything thicker than that from a tree because it does some damage but they are just perfect for putting it around there and just snipping the branch off i mean they are fantastic and they have you know the safety lever and stuff like these are like three bucks at walmart you know you might be able to find them cheaper shoot even if you have a pair that you use for your dogs you could clean those up you know and use them um let's see I always have um, a pretty strong pair of gloves 
um, for like root digging, sometimes we come across devil's club, anything that's really going to fuck your hands up, gloves. <laughs> um, okay, then of course, I always have some sort of food in my pack. Pretty good directional, I've never been lost in the woods yet, but you know, and I don't think that those two fucking breakfast bars would save me, but you never know. <laughs> um, and then, this should be pretty self-explanatory. Always have toilet paper on you. I don't care if you're not going to the woods. Keep a roll of toilet paper in your car. Listen, if you're going to have to embarrassingly shit yourself on the side of the highway, it's made a lot less worse if you can at least wipe your ass. <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but always have toilet paper on you. I mean, if there's one piece of advice I think like anybody should have who's young or even older, like have toilet paper with you wherever you go. For the most part. Um, I always have an extra pair of socks. You know, I'm from Oregon. If my feet get cold, I don't give a fuck. I'm wearing socks under my sandals. <laughs> They're just good to have on hand. And then if I am tra um, out traipsing about in like the spring or the fall and my feet get soaking wet, um, I can at least change into a dry pair of socks. Um, so one thing that a lot of people don't think about for um, if you're identifying plants is to take some graph paper with you. So I have two different types of graph paper here. I have like a almost a yellowish color graph paper, and then I have the white color graph paper. Um, now the first thing, the reason that I have graph paper is because sometimes when you're trying to identify a plant, um, you really um, you really need to know like the size of the leaf or the bloom because like certain things like chickweed or this or this or that they have um, they're identified in their differences by the like the size of them and so you know you can you know how many inches per square um, and so that helps and then the reason there's different colors is because some plants depending on their color like this little piece of grass right here um, looks pretty decent against the yellow gives you the color or it might be too bright in the sun for the white and so i have two different colors depending on the color of the plant i don't want to make it look like a color that it's not or i need it to be bright enough that it stands out um, and so i always have graph paper on me for identification purposes um okay so this should be pretty self-explanatory bags. I know, I know, people are like, it's plastic, but the thing is, you can use these over and over again. It only has to be single-use plastic if you make it single-use plastic. Um, and these are fantastic big bags for gathering. I can label them, and then you're like, oh, well, once you write on it. I'm like, once you write on it, if you use a Sharpie, you can use rubbing alcohol to take that off. And then I know what it is, because if we're gathering a bunch of stuff, well, I do have a basket, I'm not trying to, to toss everything that's all different into one basket. Um, because then, you know, you can get cross-contaminated. If you're making a tincture, I assume you just want the thing I'm supposed to be putting in there so you don't put a bunch of other stuff. And then pitch. For the love of God, if you are gathering pitch, use a plastic bag. And you're like, how am I going to get it out of that? Pop it in the fridge. Once you gather pitch and you pop it in the fridge, it'll get real cold and you can just peel the bag inside out. And then you'll have this big clump of pitch you can work with that's not all sticky. And then you can just keep using that bag. Um, and then a flute, because I play the flute pretty often. Play better than that, that was just scales. <laughs> um, but just because you know you're out and about and sometimes you take a break. Um, and now how about this inner pocket? So um, in the inner pocket I have a pair of scissors. And in case you forgot your pair of scissors, I have a pair of scissors. Um, <laughs> and then this is my main pitch getting tool. It's a little root digger, um, but I just it works so much better for pitch. You can see how it's just absolutely coated um, in pitch. <laughs> but it works great to get up underneath of the pitch, and then I can just flop it right into the bag. Um, and then, let's see, what else do I got in here? I got... Mm -hmm. A knife because you always need a knife. I've got another knife because you need another knife. This one's great for um, oyster, I mean not oyster mushrooms, but um, morel mushrooms because it's small and I can just um, go that way. Um, I got an herb stripper. This is where I can just take, I don't see anybody here I want to sacrifice for the sake of doing it. I just take whatever herb I'm working with and whatever stem fits whatever hole. You stick it in there against the grain, against the leaf, and you go like that and your stem comes out here and all your leaves come out the back. Um, I don't really use this a lot honestly, but I always have it on me. 
Um, okay. I got a lighter. I don't smoke anything, but it's always important to have a lighter because if you get lost in the woods, I mean, breakfast bars are great, but being able to start a fire um, to keep yourself warm is great too. Um, a pen, because you know, write things down. Um, I got a little bit of stuff for my sore neck. This is just some Arnica and St. John's wort balm. Um, because, you know, a lifetime, like a literal lifetime of carrying packs too heavy for me. I've got a really fucked up neck. Um, extra clip for my gun. That should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, I think personally, anybody who's going to the woods to an extent is somewhat irresponsible to not have some type of firearm on them. Um, at the end of the day, the bear and or the rapist doesn't care about your stance on guns. <laughs> so, like, even if it's just a little 22. Just something that you can use to say, you know, get out of here, bear. Although a 22 is not going to kill a bear. If it's not a super aggressive mother bear, you could probably fire a round off and scare it off. Or, you know, and if it's a tweaker, um, you know, there are people out in these woods. Listen, you get deep enough and there's only two type of people you're going to run into. You're going to run into the type of the people that just like to be out in nature and they really love it and they don't mean you any harm. And the second type you're going to run into is the people who think they're out far enough to get away with some shit. And if they run into you, they're going to be really defensive. What are you doing here? What can we do? Nobody knows you're here. You're all alone. And if you're a female, you should think about that. Um, so what about... The top pocket here. Well, for me, I have a bunch of um, offering ties. That's just my own cultural thing, but it's a way that I, I give back when I gather. Um, and then I have some yarrow spritz, which this is just um, witch hazel infused with yarrow blooms. It's fantastic for keeping bugs away, including mosquitoes and ticks. It's great if you get cut, scratched, any of that stuff can stop the bleeding. She's just a fantastic thing to have on hand. Um, and then um, this is just a little bottle of one of my perfumes because, you know, oftentimes we come out of the mountains and we have to go in town and do stuff and I'm like, fuck, I stink. <laughs> so I'm just spraying myself to make my, um, my armpits smell a little less horrendous. Okay, I think I'm down to the last couple pockets here. And I know that everybody has different stuff in their pack, but I thought this would be some good ideas. Um, I have this little can of pepper spray. Honestly, um, my dad gave this to me forever ago, um, thinking about my daughter, but I didn't want her to take it to school with her or anything. But, um, you know, I have it. You could use it on a person. Um, I do feel like a gun would be more effective. Of course a gun's going to hurt somebody more, but I mean, sometimes in that particular situation, if they see a gun on your hip, if you're in an open carry state or anywhere like that, they're not going to start fucking with you in the first place. But I do have this on me. I'd probably honestly use this on an animal more than I would a human. Um, and this is one of those bare ones that shoots real far. Um, okay, I think, oh, somewhere I've got, how do I not have gloves? I think I must have used them. Usually I also have a bunch of um, plastic gloves because I use those for pitch or getting nettle because if you get pitch on these types of gloves, they'll just be shot. Um, but yeah, and then of course um, I have my, my camera that the husband is carrying and he carries things like um, shovels, heavier things, more books that I feel like I need that I don't look at while I'm out here. <laughs> Anything else that I have him throw in his pack, he usually has the big thing of liquid, you know, because he's a lot stronger and, you know, did firefighting for a long time, so he's accustomed to carrying all that kind of stuff. So that's what I carry in my pack. And now you might not want or need all the things that I have on me, um, but maybe that'll give you some idea of things to take out with you to be prepared. And of course, I always have my basket hanging over my shoulder to gather with. So. So um, remember you're smart enough to get out here and do this and you're even smarter if you're a little bit prepared. Uh, and then whenever you're out and about, if you're like, oh, well, I might go to the woods today, I'm not sure, just throw this pack in your car. You can even make a pack specifically for going out and about and just keep it in your trunk. That way you're like, okay, I got it now. You know, and so you have all your stuff you could ever need uh, while you're out and, and wild crafting. So, I think my husband's getting attacked by an ant. <laughs> it looked like there's those little carpenter ants all over here. Um, 
thanks for watching and if you like my videos if you like what I'm all about if you feel like um, what I do is valuable please make sure to like comment subscribe turn on notifications that last one's important too that way you know when I'm posting new videos and then share sharing this stuff is really helpful to help more people learn that they are smart enough to do this too come find me on Instagram there's an ant Oh, my husband's face when I see him looking at it. Um, um, come find me on Instagram. Come find my website. Come find me all over. I offer so many things. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.